is Advanced Algebra Concept Exam Review. We're going to look at concepts 7 and 9 through 13. This first problem asks us to make a mapping diagram. It's been a while since we saw this, but mapping diagrams were pretty simple. We basically just need to list all the numbers from the domain. Negative 1, 1, 3, and 5. And all the numbers from the range, which are 1, um, Clean that up a little bit. 1 and negative 4 and negative 6 and negative 3. And then show a mapping. All right, so we're going to put all the numbers from the domain in one region and all the numbers from the range in another region. You could use rectangles, triangles, ovals, whatever shape you want. And then we need to show this mapping. So we need to show that negative 1 maps to 1. We need an arrow to show that. We show that 1 maps to negative 4. We show that 3 maps to negative 6. And finally, 5 maps to negative 3. And that's our mapping diagram for this relation. That's it for number 1. For number two, we're given f of x equals negative 3x minus 4. We're just asked to find f of 4. So f of 4 means just uh, put 4 into the f function. The f function is uh, f of x is negative 3x minus 4. So we have negative 3 times x, which in this case is 4. And subtract 4. Negative 3 times 4 is negative 12 minus 4 more is negative 16. So f of 4 is negative 16. That's number 2. Let's go ahead and work on number 3 while we're here. It says uh, suppose f of x is 4x minus 2 and g of x is negative 2x plus 1. Find the value of f of 4 divided by g of negative 2 f of 4 divided by g of negative 2 basically tells me to take 4 and put it in the f function for problem 3, not problem 2. And then take g, uh, negative 2, put that in the g function for problem 3, and then just divide those values. So let's do a little preliminary work here first. Let's find out what f of 4 is for number 3 here. So the f function says uh, 4 times x, in this case x is 4 again, and then subtract 2. Well, I have 16 minus 2 is 14. So f of 4 is 14. Now let's find g of negative 2. So we'll go to the g function and put in a negative 2. So I have negative 2 times x. Negative 2 times x in this case is negative 2. And then plus 1. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Plus 1 is 5. So if I take f of 4, which is 14, and divide by g of negative 2, which is 5, I'm going to get 14 fifths. So f of 4 divided by g of negative 2 is 14 fifths. 14 fifths does not reduce, so I can stop right there. OK, the next concept is concept 9. Do the data in the chart represent a direct variation? If so, write the equation for number 4. Well, let's take a look here. I want to analyze all the y divided by x values here. So 20 divided by 5 is 4. 120 divided by 30 is 4. 720 divided by 180 is 4. And if I pick up a calculator, 4320 divided by 1080 is also 4. So do the data in the chart represent a direct variation? Yes, they do. We can see that in the fact that all of these y divided by x's are the same value 4 and write the equation. The equation is y equals 4 that y divided by x that is the uh, variation constant x. And we're done. We've answered both questions. Yes and y equals 4x. While we're here let's go ahead and do number 5. It says, if y equals 51, when x equals 153, what is y when x equals 207? Let's solve this with a proportion. We've got 51 over 153. That's y over x. That's got to equal the y that's unknown over the x, 207. Let's reduce this. 
51 goes into uh, 153 three times. So this would reduce to 1, and this would reduce to 3. And now let's go ahead and cross multiply to solve our proportion. That'll give us uh, smaller numbers here. So I've got y times 3 is 1 cross product. That's 3y equals 1 times 2 over 207 is the other cross product, 207. If I divide both sides by 3, y is equal to, what is that going to be, 69? We should be able to check that. Is 69 divided by 207 the same as 1 third? That's what 51 over 153 is. If it is, it's correct. If it's not, we need we have more work to do, and it's correct. Number six just asks, does this equation represent a direct variation? If so, find the value of variation constant. Well, this does re represent a direct variation, and let's just uh, quickly find that constant. If I divide both sides by negative seven, I get the negative sevens reduce out. I get y is equal to two sevenths x. So I see a direct variation. I see a y equals kx type form here. y equals kx. When I have exactly that form, no plus or minus other value here, when I have exactly that form, I have a direct variation equation. So my, the answer to the first question is yes. And the variation constant is the k value 2 sevenths, constant variation. So it didn't ask me for the whole equation, even though I used an equation to help me find the k value. It asked me for just the variation constant. So I'm going to say yes, it's a direct variation, and the variation constant k is 2 sevenths. OK, in this linear modeling problem, I've got a 2-mile cab ride costs 270, a 5-mile cab ride costs 510. Find a linear equation that models cost c as a function of distance d. So we just want to find a linear equation that models cost. So in order to do that, I'm going to need a slope and a point. I've got two points. Let's go ahead and record those. Let's see, I'm modeling c. So that's a d comma c type relationship. I always want to model the y value. So c is my y value. So my distance here is 2 miles has a cost of 270, or 2.7. And my distance here is 5 miles, has a cost of 5.1, or 510. I want to get a slope out of that, so I'm going to take slope is equal to y2, which is 5.1, minus y1, which is 2.7. It's just the second y minus the first y, over x2, 5 minus 2. The minus the first x, so second x minus first x. This is equal to, let's see, 5.1 minus 2.7 is 2.4. So I'm going to have 2.4 over 3. 5 minus 2 is 3, which is, let's go ahead and simplify that. 2.4 divided by 3 is 0.8, or let's do that correctly, 0 0.8. So I've got uh, a slope now. So I know my equation, which is in the form of y equals mx plus b. I'm not going to use y and x here, because I, I was given variables c and d, or d and c. c has to equal some slope, which in this case is 0 0.8. My x variable is the distance d, plus some y-intercept b, which I haven't found yet. I'm going to go ahead and use the, the 2 comma 2.7 point to find that. So I'm going to plug in. I'm going to plug in 2.7 for C, the cost, $2.70, is equal to this 0 0.8 times D, which in this case is 2. And then plus the B value, which I'm trying to find here. So 2.7 equals 0 0.8 times 2 should be 1.6 plus b. I'm going to subtract that 1.6 from both sides, and that gives me 1.1. So I'm supposed to model this cost. 
So cost, my final answer here, cost is equal to zero point, and I'm gonna go ahead and write eight zero so it looks like 80 cents um, times D, times the number of miles I go, plus 1.10, I'm gonna write one zero so it looks like a dollar 10. Here's my function that models the cost of a cab ride. Costs a dollar ten to get in the cab, and it's eighty cents a mile. Boy, I wish it was that cheap nowadays. Okay, next we have our classic uh, strawberry cannery problem. We have seven hundred twenty pounds of strawberries. It's processed in three and a half hours. They process two thousand one hundred sixty pounds in nine and a half hours. We have to do a couple things. We need to write a linear equation to model this very much like we just did in number seven. Um, S pounds of strawberries in T hours. And then we have to find how many pounds are processed in four hours. So let's go ahead and work on part A here. Again, I'm trying to model a, a Y equals MX plus B type relationship here, except I'm trying to find how many pounds of strawberries are produced in T hours. So it's S equals MT plus B. So I need to set up my points accordingly. I have uh, 3.5 hours will give me 720 pounds. And I have 9.5 hours will give me uh, 2,160 pounds. Let's go ahead and find a slope for those values. So I've got the second y, 2160, minus the first y, 720, divided by the second x, 9.5, minus the first x, 3.5. So 2160 minus 720 is 1440. divided by 9.5 minus 3.5 is 6. 1440 divided by 6 is 240. So my slope is 240. I just need to go find that intercept. So I have S pounds of strawberries equals 240 times the number of hours T plus some unknown value B still. Let's see, let's plug in 3.5 and 720. So 720 pounds of strawberries is equal to 240 times 3.5 plus some unknown B value. So 240 times 3.5 is 840. 720 equals 840 plus B. Subtract 840 from both sides, we get a negative 120. That's my B value. So my answer for part A is S is equal to 240 T plus, or excuse me, minus 120. Part B, how many pounds of strawberries can be produced in four hours? Well, S will equal 240 times four minus 120. 240 times four minus 120 is 840. This is 840 pounds of strawberries. That's my answer for B. This was my answer for A, and we're done.